So today we're going to make this mini album and I'm going to explain to you all the equipment that you need and the materials that you'll need to put this together and how to go about it. So this video is in several different steps. First of all, I want to explain to you what you need for this album to create it. Now, here's what the album looks like. And inside you can see that we have a pocket, we have a pullout, we have a journaling card or it could be for pictures. And there are 13 pages in this album. And you don't need anything very fancy for the binding, as you're going to find out. This is all put together using business envelopes and using double-sided tape and then decorative paper pads. So, what you need. You're going to need 13 craft envelopes. These craft envelopes measure five and three quarter inches by nine and a half inches. And you need 13 of them, as I said. Now, where to get these? You can get these at the dollar store in packages of 10 for a dollar. That's really great. Or if you want, you can go to Staples and you can buy them there. They're a little bit more expensive, but the one thing you do have is a choice of color. You can get them in white. I'm using this color, the Manila simply because I want this uh, booklet to look sort of antiqued and this gives me a nice base to work with. You're also going to need double-sided tape. You can use either quarter inch or half inch. Now I recommend double-sided tape for this project because it holds very very well and since we're going to be using this to create our binding and because your album is going to be opened uh, often you want to make sure it's very secure. Using wet glue with this uh, might work a little messier, drying time is longer. I definitely do not recommend a standard tape runner, however, for this. Uh, they just won't hold up. You're also going to need black cardstock, 12 by 12, and you're going to need approximately 20 sheets of this. There's quite a bit of cutting involved in this project, as you're going to find out. This is going to be used on the backgrounds of each of the pages. You're also going to need a paper pad. Now, you don't have to have a paper pad. You can go out and, and collect uh, all kinds of different papers that you like. The reason I'm using a paper pad is because everything coordinates and I don't have to really think about it. And it's up to you what designs you want. It depends maybe on your purpose for creating this album. My example is a year in review and I use the Graphic 45 Time to Flourish uh, paper pack. Uh, the one that I'm using in the example here in the video is actually a Tim Holtz uh, paper pack called Wallflower. And this one is that I'm is because I'm going to be giving this to a couple of friends of mine that are getting married and I wanted a more masculine look in the pages and a more vintage distressed look. So that's why I'm taking this pad. But as I said, any kind will work. You're also going to need some ink pads. I'm using Distress Ink. You don't have to. You can use whatever you happen to have on hand. I'm using Walnut Stain or you could use Tea Dye. I'm using these colors because they work well with the vintage effect, but if you want to use a different color, that is okay too. It doesn't really matter. It's all up to you how you want to do this. You're going to need a bone folder. As you're going to find, this will be very, very handy when we come to folding the envelopes. It gives a nice crisp crease. A good pair of scissors. And you're going to need, for the ink pads, you're going to need an ink applicator. I prefer this type of ink applicator, but you can use finger daubers, you can use a makeup sponge, you can use whatever you happen to have laying around. Of course, miscellaneous items that you'll want, you'll want a paper cutter, you're going to want a scoreboard, you're going to want uh, uh, some more, uh, probably some wet glue, and uh, yeah, your basic toolkit to put this all together. All right, so. Now that we know what we need, I'm going to come back and show you in the next part how to prepare the envelopes for the basic album. So the next step is to stick down the envelope flaps using your double-sided tape. Now you could seal these by using the pre-glued strip that's on these envelopes, but I find that that's not really uh, strong enough to keep them closed and we want to keep them closed. So all you do is take your flap, flatten out your envelope a little bit, and right along the glue line, add your double-sided tape. And as I mentioned before, this can be quarter inch or half inch. I'm using quarter inch. 
uh, it doesn't matter. I wouldn't use anything smaller than a quarter inch though because you want to get a good seal and put it very close to the edge as well because you have a little bit of this opening down here and you don't want to stick that down because this is eventually going to form our pocket. This is where your bone folder comes in very handy. Take that and just varnish over the edges of your double-sided tape to keep it stuck down. And then what I find is I can use a paper piercer to pull up the strips. Now, if you've got nails, you can probably get a hold of it. I don't. Fold your flap over and again, varnish it with your bone folder. When I come back, I'm going to show you how to do how to uh, cut and fold the envelopes to make our basic album. Once you have all the flaps of the envelope sealed over, you want to take off just a little bit on one end. You need to take your envelope with the flap side up and cut off just this little strip at the edge by lining up at nine and a quarter inches. So you see, it's just a small little part because this is going to make the pocket. Then you're going to take your scoreboard and you're going to flip the envelope around so that the flap is still on the top, the sealed flap, but it's on the bottom. And line it up and score at six and a half inches. Now, if your scoreboard works the opposite way than mine, where one starts here or zero starts here then simply just do it from the top make do it from the sealed end that's what you want and you want to do it six and a half inches across so that you have a flap that this will create a flap like this okay so once you've done that then you're going to take and you do that to every one of your envelopes then what you're going to do is you're going to take each envelope and your bone folder and you're going to fold along that score line and try to keep it even and then using your bone folder make a good crease okay you're going to do this with every one of the 13 envelopes you have in your set the next thing you want to do to each one of the envelopes is to use your distress ink or whatever ink you have and I'm using walnut stain but you can use any color that you desire and you're going to use your ink applicator and just go around all the edges of your envelopes to give it a little bit of a, a distressed shadow look and you're going to do this on both sides of the envelope so when you've got one side done flip it over and do the next. I've already pre-done this, so that's why I'm just going over it very quickly. Don't forget the fold. You want to do the fold, and don't forget to do the flap on the inside. Now, you can put as much distress ink or whatever ink you're using as you want on this. It's up to you. I'm just giving it a hint because I just want a uh, little bit of a shadow effect on this. Once you've got that finished, you're going to take all of your envelopes and you're going to take your double sided tape and you're going to put three strips of tape along the flap. Now, what's important here is you're only putting it on one side of the flap. So the orientation of your envelope should be with the sealed flap at the top. The flap we're talking about is on the right side, then fold that over, and this is the part where you're going to put the three strips of double-sided tape. Your first strip of double-sided tape should go fairly close to the fold itself. The next one roughly in the middle of the flap and the last one near very close to the open end of the flap. And then you're going to take your bone folder and you're going to varnish this down well. This is going to become your hinges that will bind all the pages together. That's why we're putting three strips of double-sided tape on here, because you want this to be very, very strong. It also allows your 
album to have a little bit of expansion, as you'll see later on. Now we're going to put all the envelopes together to form our basic foundation for our mini album. But one thing I forgot to mention to you when I mentioned putting the score tape on each of these pieces, only put this on 12 of the envelopes. Leave the 13th one blank. You don't want to put any tape on that because that's going to be your last page. And as you see, once I show you how to put these together, that makes sense. So what are we going to do? We have our score tape on each flap. And so we're going to take the protective tape off the score tape. And you're going to take your next envelope from your pile. And basically, if you were to lay them on the table, this one has the score tape facing that way. Put this face down. The flap, the sealed flap is at the top. Fold this under. And this is how you're going to put it on. So you're going to stick this part to this part. So I find it easier if I turn it around towards me. And they're both now in the same orientation. And I just line up the fold. And you want to get this as even as you possibly can. And then just give it a good varnish with your bone folder. Now, you see what we have here? Now we have the beginning of our pages. We have a solid page here. We have the flap here, which now has become a pocket because it's stuck to the next page. And then we fold this over. So once again, just to make sure you understand how to do this, take your protective coating of score tape off. Take your next envelope, turn these around this way, so both are like this, and lay this one on top of this one, and line up very carefully your fold and your edges. And varnish. So you see what's happening. Here's a page, here's a page, and then our next page will go here. So you carry on with this format right to the last page. And your last page, remember, is not going to have any score tape on it. So when you use this one, you're simply going to stick it down here. Now, don't worry about the fact that you have a loose pocket here. We'll come to that in a minute, how we're going to fix that up. Now you have all of your envelopes attached to each other to form your basic booklet. But now we come to the last page. So you'll see you still have one flap with score tape left on it. And you have that last envelope, which I mentioned to you, uh, not to put score tape on. So what are you going to do with this? Well, you're going to take your paper trimmer or your scissors, and you're going to cut this flap off at the fold. I'm using the paper trimmer, so I'm going to put it at about six and a half inches, and I may have to adjust it slightly to get it matched up to the fold, and then cut that piece off. Now, since I cut that piece off, I don't have any distress ink on that particular piece, so I'm just going to get out my distress ink and just do that edge, both sides. Okay, that's done. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the score tape off here and I'm going to take the side that has the sealed flap and the opening at the bottom. Okay, that's important that the opening we've just created is at the bottom. And I'm going to put this on top of the score tape here to finish this off. This is our back cover. So, let me take the score tape protection tape off. And remember, my open edge is here at the bottom. Turn it over. Line it up just like we did with the other pages. And seal it. And now I would give the whole thing a really good rub to make sure all the tape is contacting with the envelopes. And so now you have your basic booklet. Now you notice 
our spine has flex to it. So if you're putting in some small 3D, 3D embellishments in this album, it will give a little bit, but this is going to hold, all right? If by chance things look a little even on these edges here, don't worry about that because we have inserts that are going to go into this and this will never be noticed at all. So now we have the basic album created. We have all our pages and our pockets. So 12 pages. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on our background paper, which is where the 12 by 12 cardstock comes into play. Okay, now that we have the album foundation together, we need to cover each of the pages and the flaps with some of the black cardstock. You're going to be cutting uh, the black cardstock, the 12 by 12 black cardstock, into pieces that are six and a quarter by five and a half inches uh, in size. You're going to need 26 of those pieces. And you're also going to cut some more of the black cardstock into pieces that measure two and a half inches by five and a half inches. And you're going to need 12 of those pieces. So this is what the piece looks like that's six and a quarter by five and a half inches. And this is what the piece that is two and a half by five and a half inches looks like. Now you've noticed that I've already put my two sided tape all the way around the perimeter of the pieces. You really don't need to put anything in the middle because this will be enough to secure it. But do use double sided tape for this, um, or you could use wet glue. The difference here is that both will hold very well, but you're going to have to wait for the wet glue to dry and it's going to take you longer to finish the booklet. Whereas with this, you can just peel it off, stick it down. Also, double sided tape I find is much stronger, as I've mentioned before, than using a tape runner. So it's going to secure your panels to the album foundation quite well. So I've already started on the album and I'm just going to finish it up. So I'm going to take one of my large pieces right here and I'm going to take off the protective backing on the double sided tape. And then I'm just going to center this on this first panel. Now remember, you have a fold here because that's your hinge. So you don't want to cover that up. These are cut just slightly smaller than the album foundation itself. So you'll get a bit of the manila uh, envelope border all the way around the edges. And that's why we did the edging with the distress ink, just to break that border up and give it a bit of a shadow. So you want to center it both top and bottom and left and right. and then just press it down and press it down well. You can use your bone folder on this if you wish. You take your smaller piece, the two and a half by five and a half inches piece, and this is going to go on the pocket flap. And again, we're just taking off the protective tape. And the same thing, remember, you have the fold here, so you don't want to cover that up. So you want to center this piece and you want to line up the top edge with the top edge of the piece on the opposite page. And that'll be your guide for getting it centered top and bottom and left and right. And seal that down. Now you want to take another one of the large pieces and this is the part that's going to cover this page. But you have a pocket here. So you're going to be putting part of this inside that pocket. Now, this is a little bit trickier because you're going to have sticky on it. Now, I suppose what you could do is only put tape halfway along each edge here, and it would hold down and work okay. I'm using full tape on this because it reinforces the whole foundation. So we'll take this off. And if you're careful, you can slide this in, but keep it sort of pressed up against the top of the pocket edge so the glue isn't uh, sticking onto the envelope itself. And for centering it, just the same way, watch this top edge and this bottom edge, and line it with the top and bottom edge of the big piece. And you're only gonna leave about an eighth of an inch here. That'll be your guide. If you stick it in too far, it will, it will co go past the fold because there's nothing inside here blocking that fold to the other side. 
If you want to be sure you don't do that, you can just bend this page up a little bit and that will act as a barrier. But if you leave about an eighth of an inch here, you should be okay. So let's see if I can do this. Had a little practice. So I'm just sliding it in, leaving about an eighth of an inch. Try and get it as square as I possibly can and nail it down. And I'm good. Okay. So that's how all the pages are covered. Now, of course, we have the back page. And we did cut enough of these squares to include the cover and the back. So we're just going to do the same thing here as we did with the other pages. We're going to center it, top and bottom, left and right. And down we go. Okay, so now we have all of our pages covered, and this is what it looks like. Pretty good, eh? Now, remember, these pages are going to be covered up by our decorative pattern paper, so you're not going to see most of this black. The black is actually going to work as a border for the more decorative pages. But why put this on first and not do it with just the pattern paper? Well, you could do it with just the pattern paper, but I think the border is a nice treatment for it. And second of all, this reinforces all of the pages in your album. This is a very, very strong album, considering it's being put together with nothing but paper, envelopes, and double-sided tape. But these layers are reinforcing each of the pages. Now, the last thing that you're going to need is the pieces that get inserted into each of these pockets. Again, they're cut from black uh, cardstock and they're a little bit longer. The actual measurement of one of these pieces is about seven inches by five and a quarter inches. It's five and a quarter because it gives us a little bit of a play for sliding in and sliding out of these pockets fairly easy. Easy, easily, sorry. And also, you want a little bit of an overhang. So when you close it, you get this effect. Okay? So you're going to need 12 of these. And when you get them cut out, uh, you just slide them in. Now, how do you get the scalloped edge? Okay. I cheated. I did all of these on my brother's scanning cut. So I programmed it in to make these cuts, and away it went. But if you don't have a brother scanning cut, there probably isn't a die that will do this either. Now, you might be able to take a die that has a scalloped edge or whatever kind of edge. It doesn't have to be scalloped. It could be anything that you like uh, that where you can cut, do a partial cut on the end of a longer piece. Or the other thing you can do is simply use a template of your scallops, make it make one, out of uh, a piece of cardstock and just on each one of your piece, pieces that you've cut out seven inches this way just lay it on the end draw around it and use your scissors to cut it out or another method you could use is simply take a pair of deco scissors you know the ones with the uh fancy little cutting edges and just cut across i would draw a line lightly with a pencil part way in and i would just cut along that line and that would give me a decorative edge as well or the other alternative is, you don't need a scalloped edge. You might want to go for something a little plainer. So in this one's case, notice that all I have done is I have quarter, corner round uh, the edge, and it will give you that effect. So there are various possibilities for this. And if you're making several of these albums, you, albums, you might want to vary uh, the style. Or you might want to make each one of these that are going in slightly different for a variety. It's all up to you. But you will need 12 of them. And once you have them cut out, you're simply going to just stick them in the pocket as such. Now, one thing about when you stick them into the pocket, this goes back to what I said a few moments ago when we we're sticking this piece in. Remember, there's actually space for this to slide all the way through because that's just a fold. There isn't anything stopping it from going right through the other side. And then if you did that, your page is not going to fold over. So when you stick them in here, just sort of fold up this page and you'll feel the edge 
and drop it in. Okay, so you do that with all of your pages. And when you have them all together and in, and I'm not going to take time right now to stick everything in here. I think you get the point. But when you close it up, you're going to get that decorative edge along the edge. That means we have now completed the whole basic element, all, or album, sorry. All we have to do now is decorate the pages, and that means cutting out from our paper pad uh, the prints we want to use. And so when we come back, that's what we're going to do next. Okay, now we've come to the part where we're going to cut our pattern paper to fill in the panels. Now, if you just look here at what I've done, just this is just to make it clear how this works. I've labeled each of my panels. You don't need to do that, but I'm doing this to illustrate how to cut the paper. So this is panel A, this is panel B, this is panel D, and then the pullout part is a panel C on both sides. Okay, so once again, A, B, D, C, C. All right, so now that we know what, what panels, what our panels are as they're labeled, I'm going to show you how to cut the paper. Now, you're going to need 13 pieces of 12 by 12 patterned cardstock for this. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, using a paper pad book is a really great idea because all your papers will then coordinate. And using double-sided paper is a good idea as well because it just adds a little bit more strength to each page. So how are you going to cut each page or each sheet of 12 by 12? Well, I'll just pull this out of our way for a moment, put it to the side, and I'm going to show you these two panels. So basically, with your 12 by 12 paper, you're going to cut two strips out. One strip is going to be 11 inches long by 5 and a quarter inches high, tall. And the second panel is going to be 10.75 or 10 and three quarter inches long and also five and a quarter inches tall. Okay, so you cut those two pieces out. Then what you're going to do is cut these pieces down. So on the first strip, and I'm calling it strip A, you're going to cut it one more time and you're just going to cut a length six inches long and it's still going to be five and a quarter inches tall. So where I've got this dotted line, you see that's at six inches, cut that and you're going to have two pieces. You're going to have one piece that's six inches by five and a quarter inches. You're going to have another piece that's five inches by five and a quarter inches. On strip B, you're going to cut it, make two more cuts on it. Your first cut is going to be five inches long and it's going to be five and a quarter inches tall. The next piece is going to be three and a half inches wide, and it's still going to be five and a quarter inches tall. And you can see where my dotted lines are. The piece you have left over is going to then measure two and a quarter inches wide. And of course, it's going to be five and a quarter inches tall. So those are your cuts. Now, you'll notice I've labeled each one of these. So this is the panel A piece. This will be a panel C piece and a panel C piece. This will be a panel D piece and this is a panel B piece. So I have already done some pre-cutting just to show you how these all fit. So here's my piece from strip A that's going to become panel A, and it's six inches by five and a quarter inches. Let's move this into the shot a little bit better. There are two panel Cs, and they're both five inches by five and a quarter inches. And then my panel D and then my last panel, panel B. So you can see here how these all fit together and I'm using the same side of the paper. Now I don't have to, I could mix this up. If it contains this, turn this one over because it's double sided and use that pattern. This is strictly up to you. But these pieces will now all fit onto the book. So let's see how that works out. Let's move our two 
sample strips out of the way and bring in the album where I've marked A, B, C, and D. So this is panel A. So this is going to fit. So you notice when we tape that down, we're going to have a little black border all the way around. When I tape down, put down panel B, I'm going to have that border around as well. And panel D, Now you'll notice panel D does not go right inside the pocket and that's okay because we don't need to put another layer of paper on the inside of that pocket. So that's why this one's a little shorter. And then of course we have the insert part and they're both C's. Let's move this up. And I'm going to place one of these panel C's on each side. Now, here's something you'll want to do. Depending on what you intend to do with this scalloped edge, if you are going to cover it, as I mentioned in an earlier part of the video, then you may want to cut out first your piece that's going to cover the black here and then position this panel. You'll also notice I didn't leave as much of a border around this because most of this isn't seen. If you're going to leave this as black, you can place this wherever you would like. Now the reason why this piece does not go all the way to the bottom is that it's being tucked into this pocket and this is going to act as a frame for a picture you might want to put there or some journaling, whatever you like. And of course by flipping it over that's where the last panel C will go. Same idea. So the way to adhere all of these, again, I'm using double-sided tape. You can use wet glue if you prefer. Again, I would stay away from using just an ordinary tape runner unless you're very confident that that tape runner is really strong and will hold a long time. Because remember, this album is going to be handled by many hands, and so you want it all to stay together. Okay, so that's how you do each of the pages. So one 12 by 12 sheet of patterned paper will give you enough panels to do one double page of your booklet. So you can sort out your papers whatever way you want and do all the rest of these. Now when you come to the, to the cover, all you need to do is take that 13th piece of pattern paper and cut it six inches by five and a quarter. It's exactly the same measurements as panel A and the same with the back page. Same measurement. And then after that, all you need to do is embellish your uh, album in whatever way you want to. Now, of course, we still have the journaling cards to look at, and that's what we'll uh, tackle next. Okay, so now we've uh, put in all of our uh, picture plates on all of the pages, and uh, everything is done. And now we can do the embellishing whichever way we'd like. Um, I stuck in the journal cards in here. Now uh, you can buy pre-made journal cards, uh, which you got in this uh, workshop. But you see here, I just cut mine from uh, the matching paper that went with this collection. And I just did some decorative uh, cuts with a corner punch, punch here at the top and another corner punch down here at the bottom. And on the back, I put some pre-made journaling cards so that this could be the area for journaling or there's space here for another smaller photo and it just slips right in here in the pocket. Now the idea of each of these pages is for putting pictures on. You could do some more journaling here or smaller pictures and of course you've got this big area as well that pulls out and you can put pictures on either side of that. Notice what I did here to uh, liven up the scalloped edge was I did a simple butterfly uh, stamp on each one with some white chalk ink. Uh, you could cover this with decorative paper if you wish. Just uh, use the edge of this as a template and cut it out and cut that down to the size it'll fit and just put it over the top of it. Um, or you could just leave it the way it is or you could colorize it um, with some acrylic paints or Tim Holtz Distress Paint, whatever you like. So now we have this album. It's all finished. We have all of our pockets and all that's left is to do the cover and this can be anything that you want on the cover and on this particular one what I did was 
I just some die cut some flowers and some butterflies, put them through my embosser to give them some texture, and uh, ink them up and put a little uh, glitz on on and put a little uh, sparkle as well and put them in the group there. I also affixed a ribbon to the back of this. Here's the ribbon glued right there on the back. And this just kind of holds it down and adds another decorative touch. And I just tie a bow. Just like that. Trim the ends of my ribbon to the length that I desire. And the album's all finished. So that's all there is to it. You can make these albums any size you want. Uh, we made it 12 uh, double-sided pages, but you could cut that down to six, or you could make it even bigger, because really, once you've learned how to connect this, uh, the pieces together, it really is endless um, how big you want to make the album. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this workshop, and happy mini-album creations.